Hello and welcome to another edition of the Father and Son Pastime Podcast. I'm Patrick. I'm Kevin. That's my dad. Uh, thank you for joining us for our Miami Marlins podcast as we talk about their all-time dream team, even though it's only been about 30 years since we've had the Marlins. Uh, so we're going to talk about the best team out of those 30 years that we can form. We have a few rules. Uh, one, you have to stick to your position, so you can't put uh, Stanton in second base because you got another right field if you option. Want to, we can play that. Oh my god! <laughs> you got to stick to them what they're known for playing uh, defensively here. Obviously, uh, we don't have a DH because the Marlins are a uh, National League team, and you have to have at least three years of service time uh, to the Marlins to be considered a Miami Marlins dream team player. If that makes any sense, so we stick to those pretty well. Uh, sometimes we get pretty silly, so we can be a little entertaining sometimes too. So some facts, some stories. I hope you enjoy it, um, and thanks for being a loyal Marlins fan. We know. That it's challenging. We both have some hard times in our own fandoms. So hopefully thinking about this amazing team and your two World Series rings will help you remember the and good times. And when they were good, they were very good. Yeah. And they were bad, they were very bad. So, That's yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. We ping pong between positions uh, and then we talk about uh, best starter, reliever, closer, manager, and then we end talking about some of your logos. We've only had four logo changes in their short history, but we'll talk about them regardless. Uh, Dad, let me start. I want to start. I always start with sure. you. Sure. Um, we're going to go with catcher first. I'm going to choose the 90s catcher, Charles Johnson. And again, I kind of grew up on Charles Johnson. I know who I think my uh, colleague is going to say uh, for best catcher. I just think that defensively, um, uh, Charles is better than JT. Um, and I know offensively, I'm going to lose out here. So it's just kind of what do you want more as a catcher? A better defensive catcher is great at pitch framing, uh, throwing people out, mm -hmm. or hitting home runs. I, I had like 1A for Charles Johnson. I was a big fan. Again, defensively, he was outstanding. But JT, Rio Muto, uh, was just all around a little better. And I liked his offensive uh, st statistics. And I think he always batted 4, 5, 6. And I think Charles Johnson was down on the lineup a little bit. But, uh, you know, as far as, you know, Someone who drove in runs and was a complete player. JT got my vote just because offense. Charles Johnson defensively was better. You are correct. But, yeah, JT went out and uh, he's still uh, playing, and I, I think he... He's one of the best catchers in the game right now. Yeah, you I can't agree. Take away from Top him. three. Mm -hmm. Who do you have for first? Derek Lee. As a Cub fan, I wanted him to talk about Derek Lee a little bit. You know, Derek, <laughs> that was one of the best trades Cubs made. In, uh, he had a great, right? couple, great couple years yeah. in the Cubs. Great. He's one of those silent assassins that he... That he always in the middle of the lineup. If you needed the big hit, he was a you know a lot of doubles, a lot of home runs. Very good defensively, by the way. Yeah, a uh, good bit of Gold Gloves during his career. Just a great athlete, a big big man, and he was great with the Cubs as well. But I think as I look for first baseman, uh, he was an easy choice for me. I agree. I, don't, I just want to talk about his defensive skills. He's a very good first baseman. He only got one Gold Glove, but he was always up there in yeah you know Gold Glove voting, if you will. Um, but I was very impressed with Derek Lee, again, playing in the late 90s to early 2000s. Mm -hmm. uh, Derek Lee was one of the best first basemen in the game. Oh, I agree. The, yeah. Uh, yeah, he was a big part of the championship teams, too. Yeah. yeah. Um, so second base is n another similar position as catcher. Do you go defensive or do you go offensive? Castillo or Ugla? I went Luis Castillo. Um, really all-around talent without power, if that makes any sense. Speed, defense, high average, gold gloves. So I went with Luis Castillo. I'm with you 100%. Yeah. Love, love the way he played second base. You're talking about range. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, uh, he again, he, he was okay offensively, and he was you know got on base and stole bases and all that. But defensively, I think was his calling card. And during that era, I don't think there's any better second baseman as far as range in the National League. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Who do you have a shortstop? Hanley Ramirez, one of my favorite players. So yeah. go ahead and talk about Hanley, and then I'll add to it. Well, you know what? It's so funny that he had his best years with you know in Miami and then as he went to the other teams and all that stuff he seemed to lose himself a little bit I'm not sure what happened but when he was in Florida he was a, just a great great player I mean he was young when he came up and he was highly thought of and then all of a sudden gets to the late 20s and you know something fell off but during his prime years in Miami he was I think the best athletic shortstop in National League absolutely very few shortstops I mean start off their career so well. You, you kind of come yeah. into your own, if that makes any yeah. sense. Henry Ramirez should be on par with, like, a Manny Machado. Uh, should be on par with, 
uh, Nomar Garcia Pera, yeah. um, because you come in and just had a fire. I mean, he was, I think, 19 or 20 when he got his MLB yeah, debut. Yeah, the range he had. Insane. And Castillo? Yeah, ne- never the greatest defensively in terms of goal glovers, and I know right. he really lost that once he was in L.A. and Boston. Um, but three-time All-Star, always a great power. I think he's a great teammate, too. Uh, I think he was fun. He was necessary in order to get Beckett for the Red Sox, and he was a centerpiece of that trade. But Miami really worked out. I mean, they got a couple years of Beckett, and then they got many years with Hanram. Uh, yeah. So I think that was a really great trade that Miami pulled off back then in 2003, yeah. I yeah. want to say. And that was a big trade. Uh-huh. A really big trade. Yeah. But I love Hanley Ramirez, so I'm glad he made someone's all-time uh, dream team. Because he's a great player, and I just think that... He's not even 40 yet, so, I mean, he just didn't make it, didn't yeah. you know, didn't have a full career. Uh, I don't know but he's was, one of my favorites. I don't know if it was injuries or whatever, but he just seemed to lose his offensive skills. Yeah. Don't know why. Uh, going to third base, you look at a future Hall of Famer, although I think he will be wearing a Detroit Tigers hat. But Miguel Cabrera uh, had, again, just like Hanley Ramirez, great... Uh, years in his early 20s, four all-star appearances, and then now he's a Tiger and has, uh, I believe, the is the current player like holding home runs, a current home run leader that's active, active. Yeah. Put those words together. And, ju- I mean, just as far as average, he's always hit like, yeah. 340 and above. And people forget that he came up as 18-year-old third baseman. Mm-hmm. 18 he came up. And, you know, played there and played with confidence. And during the really great years when he was 19 and 20, was a star on the team. So he was good early on, and he kept that level. And offensively, he still is very potent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you want to talk to talk, so the outfield? I think the outfield is really easy, but go Yeah, ahead. I, I'll go left field. Uh, you know, I'll go uh, Stanton in left field. Um Stand and left? Yeah. He never played left for Miami. Oh, yeah, he had. He was on um, the research I did. He's a right fielder for Miami. Yelich right. was your left fielder. Yelich was a center fielder. Mm-hmm. Marcelo Suna was a center fielder. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. Well, then let's put Yelich in left field. <laughs> That's why Yelich moved to right, because uh, when he was in, in, or now in Milwaukee, bronzer left fielder. You know what's so funny? I, when I did the research and they looked up Yelich, in the text, he, they said that he was a center fielder. I think he might have been before Ozuna, okay. but again, more years as a left fielder. Check okay. me. But again, yeah. what's so great about these all these three players that we're mentioning is they really can't play any position. I want to put Stanton in the center, but but right now he either plays left field or DH for the Yankees. He ne- yes, but again, we're talking about the I Marlins. Know. But I know yeah, that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then that's my mistake. Again, Judge is younger. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and that's my mistake. Uh, I got a multiple center. I, mean, I know there's a lot of talented. But the, yeah, the. Um, We'll, we'll keep him. But the other outfielder that I'm not sure, I think he ended up playing a little left field, was Sheffield. Sheffield played left for L.A., but right for Miami okay. or Florida at the time. All right. So who do you have for left field then? I have Yel- this, the same thing before all these people got traded away to different teams, but Yelich, Azuna, and Stan. Okay. So left, center, right. Sort of how they really came wow. into their own on. So I just kept that outfield trio together. Interesting. Yeah. And Sheffield to the wayside. Sheffield was my snub. Interesting. I love Gary Sheffield, but okay, he played right field, and Sheffield or Stan seems like a pretty easy call. And then Stan said, "I'm on right field." You said, he, "Okay." Yes, he said that exactly. <laughs> he lost some weight this year so far. Yeah, he looks a little smaller. He hit I'm not going to say that to him. He hit a home run uh, against yeah. the Orioles. That was a line drive. Yeah, yeah. and um, he's still a very strong man. But I will yeah. say something about Yelich. He was never an All Star as a Marlin. Yes, yeah. very strange. He kind of found himself as he got yeah. older. And Ozuna, he was skinny. Yeah, Azuna got a gold glove in Miami, and I watched him completely miss a pop-up in that World or not World Series, that uh, Championship Series game with the Nationals last yeah. um, October. So, uh, yeah, I don't know where his head was at that game. After the Nats went up a couple runs, he I just th- gave up. I think he got a little heavy. Um, yeah. And as you look at him, I mean, in Miami he was much thinner. And faster, maybe too. Yeah, so I think it, he didn't carry the weight well. Yeah. So maybe he thought it was going to bring him more power. So who is your outfield the way you want? You want Stanton in the left, Stan, Yelich in Yelich center. And, and Sheffield in right. Okay. Sound off in the comments who yeah. has a better outfield. I think you might be a little slow in your outfield, actually. Well, it doesn't um, matter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Long standing bats every third inning. Okay. That's all that matters. And Yelich had a great career in Miami. Yeah. You know, I mean, he was always... Yeah. In the I think he did start at center and then moved yeah. to left with Azuna coming But up. the Brewers nabbed him for next to nothing. That was a great trade by the Brewers. Yeah, of course it was. Great trade. Yeah, he's an MVP. Yeah, and but, that's when they really dismantled the team. Yes, so and they, I'm sure Miami and... I don't know, I'm very curious. If you're a Miami fan watching this, what is your opinion on Derek Jeter? 
because there's a lot of conspiracies there that, it, you know, as soon as Jeter came down to Miami, Stanton went to New York. So I'd love to hear your opinions, and we can chat about it in the comments. Uh, you know what? He's he's trying to build from the international uh, market and everything else, and I can see what he's trying yeah. to do. It's going to be a slow process. It is. And he's not used to losing. No. Uh, no, he's not. With how many? I don't even know if he has how many rings he has at this point. But regardless, I don't know if he'll ever win one in Miami. I think he might get replaced before he can achieve success. Or move on. Yeah, or yeah. quit, yeah. yeah. Uh, moving into pitching staff, I want to take just a moment um, and just – give some respect to Jose Fernandez. I think he could have been your ace for years and quite possibly a Hall of Famer. Um, very sorry that your franchise was was you know centered around this guy and he died in such a tragic way. Yeah. I did not choose him for my all-time pitcher. Um, I went with Dontrell Willis, again, just a little bit more, kind of what I grew up with, and he truly was dominant. Um, he had 22 wins one season, and I just thought that high leg kick, that strong lefty presence on the mound out of anyone and I know what we just talked earlier I just talked about Beckett earlier being that major trade piece to get Hanram Beckett's probably my second choice but I'd rather give the ball to Don Trell he's just more capable of dominance than Beckett I went with Beckett um, when he pitched in the playoffs and World Series there wasn't a mm -hmm. more confident pitcher on the mound I'm talking about heat yeah he won back strong. to back World Series on two different teams yeah, kind of hard to do I know, but just a strong, strong yeah. young man. I think he was in his 20s when he was so good. Another one got flamed out as time went on, all that stuff. But just was, him and Clemens used to remind me of one another. Just because he got the, the ball in the mound and he said, you're not taking me out. And they just threw as hard as they could for as long as they could. And they were both great competitors. A lot of respect for Josh Beckett. Awesome, yeah. Uh, who is setting up and closing for your well, Beckett? Well, I, I went for a little craziness. I went for a name that you may never heard of. I guarantee uh, I've heard of it. Antonio Alfonseca, and then Rob Nen is my closer. Rob Nen's a very simple choice as closer. Alfonseca, I almost chose, but he had a high ERA for a reliever. And again, if you're just trying to set up, you're not trying to change the score at all. You want some, you want your closer to come in so to win or get the save. So I went with Steve. It's always so tough. C Schick. Very good. Check me on that. So I think it's C Schick, uh -huh. even though it's with a C pronunciation, American language, tough, right? Um, and I just think that he has had a lower ERA versus Alfonseca. Um, and I think Alfonseca probably has more saves because I know he was in that closure role Correct. for a while. Correct. Um, but Steve, I th I'd rather give the ball to in the eighth to set up for net in the ninth. Yeah, I mean, still a very good pitcher. Had great years with the Cubs the last couple of years. Little known fact about Antonio, I only had four fingers. I didn't so, know that. Yeah. So when he pitched... So he had a really four-seamer, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you hear that from the drummer in the background. Yeah. You got a full band back there, by the way. You got Peter Christ. Yeah, that's right. But at the same time, uh, little known fact, I mean, I think he was missing his, his third finger, something like that. So he gripped it, and then he threw it and all that. Good for and, him. Yeah, so... But at the same time, he was a character. And I'll tell you, he during the, the good years in Miami, he was the closer. So I, I liked him a lot. Which... Uh, winning, I'm assuming you chose either the 97 manager or the 2003 manager for your all-time manager of this dream team. Which one did you choose? Trader Jack. Okay, Jack McKeon, McKeon. 2003. Yeah. Okay, yes. Yeah, I, I liked him, him as well. Yeah, I liked him a, a lot. In, he was you know, an older gentleman when he was managing. And I think he was involved in baseball well into his 80s. Um, but, you know, the, the one person that we snubbed that had a great career in Miami was Mike Lowell. Yeah, you know? yeah, but Miguel Cabrera. Oh, I know. So, you know, where you put him. Yeah. If there's a DH, then I guess Mike would go there. But yeah, that's just, right. Just, I mean. Or Conine at first, yeah, too. I mean, what that's... offensive lineup? I mean, if you look at this lineup, that's going to score a lot of runs. Yeah, it will. Yeah. With the right, yeah, right pitching, right management. Again, there's been Miami teams that have clearly, you know, been the best team in baseball Dominant. to Dominant. ring. And there's yeah. been teams that the, has been the basement of MLB. So yeah, it's just. It's still sore. Yeah. And again, no disrespect yeah. to Marlins fans. We know it's hard to be there to build a, build something. Yeah. Um, but let's end talking about uh, your logos. New one uh, pretty recently. So we got the Florida Marlins, which was their logo entirely mm -hmm. through their Florida name. And then several changes to the Miami logo, which is your favorite. Dad. I like the one that's current with the baseball and the dolphin. I mean, the, the Marlin on top. The dolphin. <laughs> yeah, so sorry. It's okay. It's another Miami team. That's right. But I like the, the last one. I like the colors. They've always been really cool with... The vibrancy. Yeah. So, yeah, I like the, the recent one. Then I will go the exact opposite. I grew up watching the Florida Marlins. 
And I love just the simple kind of MLB logo in the background of a Marlin kind of popping through it. I love it. So I'm going to go with your original Florida Marlins logo that got you that, um, the both uh, World Series championships. What was the thinking of the, the name change? I know Florida was geographic and marketing and all that stuff, but what made them change to just the Miami Marlins instead of the Florida Marlins? I don't know. If you know why, feel free to sound off in the comments, but I think you kind of said it, that it's just... We'll change the logo. We'll change. We're, I think there was a stadium change during that time. It too. was. Yeah. Um, so I think it was just a facelift, if you will. Okay. Yeah. All right. But yeah. So that's the Florida Marlins. We appreciate you watching. Please give us a like, comment below in the you know in the comments about what you like, what you didn't like. You thought Sheffield was a snub on my list. Um, if you thought his outfield kind of configuration was a little wackadoo, uh, let us know. Uh, but thanks for watching and give us a subscribe. We really appreciate it. Thanks for watching.